Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone, my name is Nadia Krimalamshah and I'm from Conflict Resolution in the Islamic World Class. So in this video, I would like to deliver a special topic which is the efforts of Saudi Arabia in resolving Iran and Saudi Arabia conflict. So before we move to the discussion, let's move to the first part of the session which is the background of the conflict. So first thing first, we have to understand first about what is conflict and international relation. And does a conflict and international relation categorize as a natural phenomenon? So to answer this, according to Johan Galtung, he is one of the experts of the conflict resolution, define conflict in international relation is categorized as a natural phenomenon that occurs because it is triggered by the differences of opinion as well as the differences of perceptions of a country in seeing something or in seeing certain international issues. So these differences of opinion as well as the differences of perception of a country will somehow lead into a conflict and at the end of the day, it will pose a threat to political stability. So to put a simple way, Conflict that is frequently occurred can pose a threat to political stability, which in turn will encourage countries in the region to be actively involved in a conflict. And in the case of Iran and Saudi, we have to understand first about what is the root of the conflict. So as we know that in the case of Iran and Saudi, the conflict occurred between these two countries caused by the dimension of sectarianism. Iran with its Shia, meanwhile Saudi is a Sunni Muslim leading countries. And let's move to the dynamics of the conflict. So from the history, the conflict between Iran and Saudi Arabia began when the revolution of the Islamic Republic of Iran in 1979, as well as the Iraqi and Iranian war in 1980 up to 1988 took place. So the revolution uh, is basically a form of overthrowing the monarchy rule caused by the sectarian conflict between Sunni and Shia at the time, as well as a form to overthrow secular governments to be replaced with the Islamic republics. And the conflict between Iran and Saudi Arabia continued to increase with the involvement of Saudi Arabia in the Iraqi and Iranian war in 1980s. And those two events shown the beginning of the Iran and Saudi Arabia rivalry in the Middle East. And in the case of Iran and Saudi conflict, we already, we already know that it is rooted from the sectarianism, but as we know today, it is more likely to be geopolitical competition between two countries in the region. So the tension between uh, two countries continue to escalate with the involvement of the two countries in other, uh, in other conflicts, which, uh, for, for example, is the Syria conflict and the Yemen conflict. And the for example, the involvement of Saudi Saudi in the conflict of Syria in 2016 by sending military troops is believed to have an objective which is to topple down the, the, the regime of Bashar al-Assad and to minimize the influence of Iran through its Hezbollah because uh, both Saudi Arabia and other GCC members categorize Hezbollah as the terrorist group that support Bashar al-Assad regime which at the end of the day it will pose a threat to the stability of the region. And meanwhile, in the Yemen conflict in 2015, Iran and Saudi Arabia was involved indirectly in the war in which the involvement of Saudi Arabia, for example, by sending troops and military campaign to fight against the rebel, which is the Shia Houthi. And the, con the conflict continued to escalate until it reached its peak when the Saudi Arabian government uh, stipulates or imposed the death penalty of one of all for the prominent uh, Shia cleric, which is the Sheikh Nimr al Nimr. The reason behind this Saudi's decision on the death penalty is because Sheikh Nimr supported the independence of Qatif and Al Asal. The, these are the two regions in, located in Saudi Arabia where the majority of the Shia people lived in Saudi Arabia and demanding legal rights for the Shia in Saudi Arabia. And on March 2009, Al Nimr criticized the Saudi's government and threatened that if the Syria rights in the in Saudi were not respected, and it will lead to a movement for separatists in the Qatif and Al Sol regions with the aim of forming a new Shia states in the Saudi Arabia. Besides, Nimr also formed an independent separatist organization called Al Awamiyah in the eastern province of Saudi Arabia. And after the death penalty of Sheikh Nimr, Iranian people conducted demonstration and expressed their protest in front of the embassy of Saudi Arabia in Tehran as well as the consulate of Saudi Arabia in Mashhad. 
In response to the conflict, Saudi terminated the diplomatic relations with Iran and it is followed by other countries who support uh, Saudi Arabia at the time such as Bahrain, Kuwait and other TCC members. And the death penalty is perceived to have hindered the efforts of these two countries to conduct peace building for this prolonged conflict. And the research question that is applied to this study is how is the Saudi Arabia's effort to resolve the Iran and Saudi's conflict? But before we answer these questions, we have to use the theoretical framework in helping us to analyze the conflict. So in the study, a rational actual theory proposed by Graham to Ellison is applied because, for example, according to this theory, the object of the rational actual theory refers to how the decision makers can determine their behavior in achieving foreign policy in accordance with the country's need as well as uh, or in accordance with the country's interest. And state, in according to rational actor theory, is categorized as the main rational actor who has the capacity in determining its policy that will meet its interest. And what's the core idea of this uh, theory is the optimization of interest. So the decision maker basically have the rights to determine the best possible way to gain maximum benefits in achieving its goals. Now what's the correlation between our topic today is in the case of Saudi's effort to resolve Iran and Saudi conflict, we know that the Saudi Arabian government under King Salman administration determined the action that takes precedence in achieving its interests, which in this case is Iran and Saudi conflict resolution. And several measures conducted by the Saudi Arabian government indicates that the good faith of Saudi to solve this conflict by using peaceful means that we'll discuss further in discussion part. And the actions taken by the Saudi have been based on the cost and benefit rationalization and analysis in order to reach common agreement between Iran and Saudi Arabia. And here, Saudi Arabia as a state, as the rational actor, shown that they have the capacity to calculate the consequences, both the short-term effects and long-term effects. And let's move to the discussion, which is the conflict resolution proposed by Saudi Arabia. So basically, Saudi Arabia is focusing on the mediation method in solving the issues. Like for example, Saudi Arabia asked the OIC members or the Organization of Islamic Cooperation members to take part in resolving the conflict on the basis of Islamic solidarity by choosing several member countries to be their mediator in this conflict. Those several countries that become the mediator are Iraq and Indonesia and, and as well as other countries. And the Saudi's government first asked Iraq through its Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi to be the mediator in the Iran and Saudi Arabia conflict. And this mediation process obtained positive response from the Iran because Iran perceived that Saudi's, Arabi, uh, Saudi's effort to resolve the conflict is based on the Islamic solidarity and to reduce the tension in the Middle East. Meanwhile, for Indonesia, other countries who help the mediation in this in this conflict, uh, Indonesia categorized or acknowledge both Iran and Saudis are Indonesia's good partners. Therefore, the intention of Indonesia to resolve this conflict can be seen from several uh, measures. So, the first step taken by Indonesia in dealing with this problem was to build build was to build trust by helping the governments of Saudi and Saudi Arabia and Iran to build mutual trust between the two. And Indonesia's intention in mediating this the conflict between Saudi Arabia and Iran was shown by the government of Indonesia by sending the foreign minister of Indonesia, which is Suret Namursidi, to Saudi Arabia and Iran. And on January 13 in 2016, the foreign minister Suret Namursidi uh, met the Iranian Foreign Minister Muhammad Javad Zarif and President Hassan Rouhani to deliver a letter from Indonesian President Joko Widodo containing Indonesian views and concerns regarding Iran and Saudi Arabia's conflict. And on January 18, in 2016, Indonesian Foreign Minister visited Riyadh to have an official talk with King Salman to emphasize the importance of regional stability and peace, as well as the importance of the good relations between Saudi Arabia and Iran, and Indonesia's willingness to help improve the situation between the Saudi Arabia and Iran relations. And apart from that, 
Indonesian Foreign Minister Retno Marsudi called the General Secretary of OIC as well as the Foreign Minister of Saudi Arabia and Iranian Foreign Minister to conduct multilateral dialogue that focus on the conflict resolution for this conflict. And on January 21st in 2016, the President of Indonesia, Joko Widodo, offered a political solution to recommend a formulation of a mechanism such as Code of Conduct or COC, which contains the principle of trust building, respect country sovereignty, as well as the principle of not interfering in the domestic affairs of, the, of other countries. And talking about the conflict resolution in the Islamic world, we also talk about the relevancy with the Prophet Muhammad methods for resolving the conflict and the effort that is done by the government of Saudi Arabia that we have discussed uh, before to resolve the Iran and Saudi conflict is by using mediation from, from other uh, OIC members. And the need is because the need to conduct official dialogue is expected to reach common agreement between two conflicting parties and the Iran and Saudi Arabia conflict, it can be seen that there are several countries that took participation as the mediator to solve the conflict such as Iraq and Indonesia. And it is proven that by the evidence that the ministers of these two mediator countries were conducting official visit to the conflicting parties, which is the Iran and Saudi Arabia. And the effort that is shown by Saudi Arabia is prioritizing using peaceful means rather than using coercion and the support from the OIC members proven as the solidarity in the Muslim world to upheld the Prophet Muhammad method and resolving conflict which is the participatory method because we know that participatory method is the method that is used by involving other parties to take part to become the mediator to be the, the neutral uh, the neutral parties to solve the issues and for the conclusion the iran and saudi arabia conflict which had happened for a long time has affected to the political stability in the region the death penalty done by the saudi arabian government over one of the prominent shia cleric shahimar al-nimr worsening the tension which led to the termination of the diplomatic relations between the two countries and as part of OIC members, both Saudi and Iran gained support from other from other members to solve this conflict immediately on the basis of Islamic solidarity through the involvement of the third party to become the mediator. And the measures taken by Saudi Arabia through mediation is expected to be the best possible way to reduce the tension in the region. And furthermore, Mediation as a peaceful means is in accordance with the Islamic teaching and the method that is done by the Prophet Muhammad for conflict resolution. So I think that's all for today's video. Thank you everyone for your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.